how's everybody doing? Great. Great? So we are doing the event three from the quarterfinal. So this is 120 wall balls. Men, you're gonna throw to a 20 foot, not 20 foot target, you're gonna throw a 20 pound wall ball to a 10 foot target. Ladies, 14 pound wall ball to a nine foot target. Then you're gonna row 120 calories. After we go to the whiteboard, we know that we're gonna take athletes through a general warm-up. And the general warm-up serves a number of different purposes. First, we're gonna raise the body temperature. We're gonna get the blood flowing, and we also wanna get athletes breathing a little bit, especially for the purposes of this workout. We also wanna make sure that we take their body through a full range of motion of the joints. And we can do this through incorporating pushing and pulling movements, as well as hip flexion and hip extension movements. And then finally, we wanna make sure that we're able to practice basic skills. We can add in repetitions of those basic skills, and then we can also let in and sprinkle on more advanced or more complex skills and drills over time. As you guys are starting your stroke, we're going to try and push our hip and our shoulder together. And what we're going to try not to do is either initiate the stroke by pulling with our shoulder only or pushing with our hip but not bringing the, um, the handle along with us. Okay, so to do that, all we're doing is we're going to squeeze from the front, squeeze our stomach, and we're going to push our hip and pull with our shoulder, you gotta do both. So here I'm highlighting to athletes how I want them to move their body away from the erg. I don't want them to lead with the hip only and I don't want them to pull with the shoulder only. I want them to move both away from the erg, really at the same rate, very similar to a deadlift. That's really what I'm gonna float around and look for during this first two minutes of rowing. What we're gonna do, we're gonna do this together. We're gonna go a two second lower. So I want the bottom of the ball even with your chin. We're gonna send our hips back. One, two, here I'm showing them what I want. So we're gonna do eight reps of a two second lower to the bottom of their squat. So a lot of athletes will round forward to get pulled out of position when they catch the ball. I'm just checking to make sure that athletes are staying nice and upright in that squat, which is why we're having them do it close to the wall, making sure that athletes are hitting their depth, they're initiating with their hips going back, and that we've got a good front rack position for that wall ball. Hips back and down, good depth, Amy, good depth, Peter, and stand. Connor, go an inch less deep on your next one so you stay nice and tight at the bottom. And squat and hold. So if you watch my low back, I don't want that. I'm gonna try and push up and be in that good hollow position. Hold for 10, we'll do it together. Now everybody get a little bit taller. Push that, there we go. And walk yourself back down. Now I'm just looking at every single athlete as they're in that hold. And initially I'm really scanning the group to make sure that everybody's comfortable getting upside down and that we've got a baseline level of understanding how to start that wall walk. So right now push your shoulders toward your ears. There you go, get a little bit taller. Flex your triceps, Shelly. Yep, get taller, there you go. Give me a little mini sit up and walk yourself down. We're specifically using the rower today to elevate the heart rate, to practice some technique on the erg, as well as get them prepared to understand what it will be like to row 120 calories. See how the chain's going up here? I want you to try and feed it through right in the middle of that rectangle the entire time. I'm just having her drive it right in the middle of that rectangle. And just by feeding the chain into that rectangle, her body starts to figure out how to have a more proper return. If you can throw a 14 in yeah. sets of sixes, yeah. and you can do it, keep doing it, today would be a good day to try. Okay. Because if you lose like rowing 20 calories on the rower. Yeah, I can do that. Here I'm nudging Kara to do the workout RX and use that 14 pound wall ball. And there's a number of reasons why I'm trying to nudge her in that direction. She was a little hesitant. She's throwing to a nine foot target. Her squat depth is great. And I know that she's gonna be able to throw reps and sets of six to 10 throughout the workout. So at this point in time, I've made it to everybody to figure out what weight wall ball they're going to use for the workout. And this is helpful because now as they go do wall balls in the rest of warm up, I can evaluate and make sure that I also agree that that weight is going to be the right choice for them for the workout. Right now, I'm just watching to make sure that they're hitting their depth. Now, one thing that we work on a lot is having the right order of operation. So we wanna hit the depth of the squat first before we worry about getting the ball to the target. When we say the top, get your hands on the black mat and then walk yourself back out, okay? And he's walking all the way back down trying to keep this tight. Here I'm having Connor demo the wall walk. Now I knew he was in class so I could use him as a demo. He has a great wall walk, which allows me to point to some of the things that I wanna highlight. 
There's also this element with a wall walk where no matter where you are in teaching, if you're trying to talk while you demo it, you're gonna be talking either to the floor or to the wall and it hinders your teaching. So I can use somebody else and then point to the things that I wanna highlight. There you go. Good. So let's make this all more rigid. There you go, good. Now walk yourself back down. One thing that will happen on the wall walk is as the athlete is walking up the wall, they start to bend their legs and the length of the body is actually getting shorter rather than staying long and rigid and pushing that straight body up the wall. So here I'm, I'm really just telling the athlete to flex their quads to help keep their legs straight and to reach their feet up the wall as they push through their arms. All right, so right now you guys have your power output. You see something like 750 or 1250, that big number right in the middle of your screen. I want you to know what that is right now. And if that starts to fall off at the minute mark, that should be data and information for you. So what I'm telling them right now is if they start this two minute row, which is supposed to be at a faster clip at say, 1200 calories per hour and then by a minute into it they've dropped to 900 calories per hour well we know that that pace that 1200 is not going to be sustainable over the course of 120 calories and so really it's, it's a way to start talking about how to pace out the 120 calories for each individual athlete. Rather than giving them an arbitrary number, this is a way to make it relative to each individual athlete uh, so that they can start to figure out, hey, this is how I might pace that 120 calories so that I don't fly and die off the front. So that's the gist for why these three movements were chosen for the warmup for that specific workout. Now, not only did those movements give the athletes time to warm up and practice the movements, but it also gave the coach time to assess and make sure that every athlete was set up for their proper scaling options for the workout. And then finally, with the wall walks, we're able to start sprinkling in movements with a little bit more complexity so athletes can develop those skills over time.